Am I right? I wanted my buddy to prepare the ship before the night flew. So you better find me some gold or walk the plank. And shiver my timbers. Who is that? That's from the future captain. It was John yesterday and he showed up. Alright, alright. You come with me. Hey, ready, mates? Hey, yeah, captain. I can hear you. Hi there, I'm Stefan, and welcome to Dice and Meeple, a video series where I talk about the board games I played and all the other tabletop stuff that piqued my interest. Today I'm doing an overview and review of Chrono Forces, published early this year by TMG, signed by John Beer and Vicente Zero, with art by Thomas Vergut and graphic design from Matt Packett. Chrono Forces is an action programming and a majority game in which two to five players represent card captains, more by a time star. Along with your ships and crew, repeat day after day, collecting treasure until the storm ceases and the time portal collapses. The game lasts one hour to one hour and a half, and the captain the most time chance at the end of the game is the only. As usual, also are the icehackers and components. The art of this game is kind of unusual. On the main board and on the island tiles, you have what it looks like traditional digital painting, but they have control lines and little parts that look like portal textures. So this has a bit of a cartoony feel and gives the game a more of a humorous mood. The plane and artifact cards are similar in style, but the illustration looks almost like 3D models with a painted textures. Uh, it's well executed, but my personal preference would be for less contouring and those in the flatter look. The graphic design work does supplement it well and it fits the game nicely. All the icons look like wood stamps or carvings. And looking over your ship map feels like looking over stuff laid out on a pirate ship table. Except for the background on the very top, it throws off that effect a little bit. But the meeples are top notch as far as form is concerned. I joke about the offices being the real pirate meeples, but the crew pieces are certainly pirate looking with the detailed little bandanas. And the offices have actual shape and wooden legs if you look closely. Now, when it comes to pieces in general, I don't think there is much exceptional. The main bar is more on the premium production side, considering how heavy it is. The punch outs and cards are fairly decent and match the game price point. The rule books were laid out and concise, but I think I missed the reference section to explain and clarify all the different effects from the island tiles, the different type of cards and events. If anything, so at least new players know what kind of effects are out there, since the iconography is easy and most of the cards have the effects also written down. Also, the rulebook refreshes with the icons with the sunset as evening and the ones with the moon as sunset. I assume that this might be adding oversight, but nothing big. There are two things that I think could have been improvement to the experience though. One is the ship mats. They are very good card stock, but double sided boards would have been welcome here to hold the plain card drawing tracks and the purchasable meeples in place. They all have been transparent plastic gens instead of cardboard punch outs. This kind of choice makes very much sense in a game with finite points cards like Flotilla, or here we have just used bigger gems uh, to represent bigger amounts. But even without those, the gameplay is good enough for me. I'm a little positively biased here about the gameplay, for three reasons. One is that I love action programming, or more precisely in Chrono Process, action queuing. This is the same mechanic seen in games like Turkirian, World for the Galaxy, and my all-time favorite pickup and delivery, Kings of Einstein. Unfortunately, this is also something that may make this game not for everyone. Most of the plans are centered around moving the officer and carry the crew meeples with it. But there are effects in the game that can displace or even destroy both types of meeple. It's entirely possible that if someone messes with your meeples early enough, the rest of the round is gone for you. There is also some luck involved. The island tile setup is somewhat randomized, possibly making the entry points of the islands anything but beaches. We that being the first pre-printed movement on the ship mats, depending on the initial draw of playing cards, you can end up with a suboptimal opening modes. That actually happened to me in my very first game, and it was not until the round 3 that I was finally able to lay out playing cards in order to reach it, the entire island. Also, there is an unstable versus stable playing cards choice. The unstable cards don't offer as much as mobility, but they are incredibly aggressive and sneaky, with the potential to ruin a good plan of stable cards only. The only drawback is that the round marker moves forward with additional space in the round they are played, which there are something else like negative points. For people that don't like directly conflict, remove them will still leave the area majority for actions and struggle. This is where my favorite part of the game is though. 
Early in, you have to be conservative with the moves in order to secure action Z. And it's totally possible to sneak in meeples here and there on empty tiles. But since tiles are break for both the first player in the turn order, you have to be very careful in balancing risk and reward. I only played two players' games so far. In this count, you're actually almost guaranteed to get the action you want, since all the island tiles, except for the special caves, have duplicates. But I can see the potential for higher play counts to completely shut off certain players from the get-go. I recommend a 4-5 or five player game with people that play at least twice to avoid this type of situation. Second is the pirate team. I usually not immediately draw to serious parallel, but anything with thematic spin and chaotic gaming play will get me. Libertarian and Walk the Plank are good examples of this. Time is friendly pirate sounds pretty cool then. And I like how the time storm becomes more and more unstable before the ending, it's translating to game mechanics. Towards the end of the game, the tiles start to with more points. And the anomaly cards keep the game pretty replayable. There is only 9 cards total, but since it's unlikely that the game actually lasts for 9 rounds, normally you don't see all of them. The effects also change depending on when they come out. In some cards it's just a stronger version, but in other cards it's entirely a new thing. Like where did everyone go? That changes from recalling a crew member for money to put a lot of meeples directly into the map tiles before running the loop. Each card also has a small piece of lore on the top. I haven't talked much about the event tiles, but I like them too. If you're lucky, you can get double, crews, and even time games. When the game starts, it's more of balancing out if you were to include in revealing the ending of plans. But as soon as you face up, it gives even more value to arrange your cards in the right order since they only trigger if the spaces enter at that specific time of the day. Finally, this is published by Taste Mitrio Games, which tends to release games that I really like, including some of my favorites. So overall, I like this game. I don't think you hit the table very often, but it's a keeper for my collection. I don't think this will please the strictly more have euro leaning gamers, but for anyone that likes action queuing and the fair amount of take that or cut a game flow, Chrono Cross Series should be a fun time. If you'd like to know more about Chrono Cross Series, I'll leave a link in the description for its BGG page. And if you'd like to buy it, please consider getting from a friendly local game store. They can use all the help they can get right now. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and comment on what games or type of videos you'd like to see from me next. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. In see you later and have a week full of Dice and Meeple. Oh, and before I leave, often Dice and Meeple is a brand new series and we're still testing some things out. If there's anything you'd like to see more of or less of, consider leaving a comment below. If you like the content I did so far, you can help the series by subscribing and hitting the bell. Promise you'll not feel for notifications. You can also check out my talk found on Teespring, where I'll be posting merchandise with off dice and meeple design, and collateral for my personal design projects. Talking about design, you can check experiencedesign.com for some of my graphic design work. Links for both will be in the description. Bye, and for real design.